Jessie V and welcome back to my series called Movies. I'm seriously so excited about this series but it also freaks me out at the same time because I'm learning so much about movies that I never really wanted to know. Like I feel like this series is gonna be exciting and weird but it also might ruin some of your childhood memories so as long as you're okay with that. For example, as you can tell by the title of this video, you're probably like, What do you mean Peter Pan's a bad guy, Jesse? Like, I liked him all my life. Like, he's a great guy. He takes kids to Neverland. Sorry to break it to you, but there's a lot of evidence that I just learned that sort of tells otherwise. The other day I was just casually researching Peter Pan and a lot of stuff came up from people saying that he's actually a villain and he's actually a monster. So we're gonna go through all of those really disturbing points in just a second. I just firstly wanted to remind you guys that it is almost the end of the month, which means I'm going to be soon announcing the backdrop winner for this backdrop behind me. So if you have not entered to win this Panic at the Disco background, all you have to do is go subscribe to my other channel called V Vlogs. I will link it down below in the description. And after you have subscribed, all you have to do is go to the video titled How Bulldogs Open Gifts and comment your favorite part of that video. So two steps, subscribe, comment, and you are entered. And I'll probably Probably be announcing the winner next week. I have to actually because that's literally the end of the month. Anyways though, let's get into movies. That's like my intro song now. <laughs> No. Okay, so I had no idea what to title this video. I had like three different options. My first one was why Peter Pan is probably a monster. The second one was the dark side of Peter Pan. And the third one was why you should be afraid of Peter Pan. So all of those titles are sort of unsettling. I have no idea which one you have right now. I'll have to choose that while I'm editing. So let's go into these points of what people actually think of Peter Pan. So the first one, Peter Pan is a child abductor, which should be pretty obvious to you guys. I feel like even when I was a kid watching Peter Pan, that sort of aspect of things sort of creeped me out. It made me feel a little bit unsettled because if you really think about it, he's like climbing into children's windows and taking them away. Peter appears to be an innocent, carefree boy, but he's actually much older than he looks. So growing up my whole life, I thought that Peter Pan was a little boy, but there's actually a lot of evidence online that suggests he is an adult already, which makes stealing children away from their homes even weirder. So I don't know if you guys have ever read the original Peter Pan book. In the book there is this line where he's talking to Wendy about his mother and what he says is a little bit strange so I'm going to quote it right now. It says if Peter ever quite had a mother he no longer missed her. He could do very well without one. And then he says to Wendy, perhaps my mother would say I was old and I just always wanted to be a little boy and have fun. So he said he always had wanted to be a little boy and have fun. So just just take that part in and how his mother always said he was too old like what does that mean so is he delusional then because yeah the children might have agreed to go to Neverland with Peter but that doesn't change the fact that he is an adult whisking away a bunch of children for fun and games in his own private paradise that he calls Neverland doesn't that freak you out like pretend you're like little again and like an ice cream truck pulls up in front of your house and the man in there is like hey guys I'm gonna take you to Neverland jump inside would you be like yeah or would you be like I'm gonna call the police. So that ice cream truck driver is basically Peter Pan. You know what I mean? Am I ruining your childhood yet? So the next point that proves Peter Pan has a really dark side is that he hates adults. Hates with a capital H. Do you guys remember that when Wendy was talking about how she had to go home, Peter flew into complete rage. I remember when I watched that part as a little kid, I was always so confused about that because I was like, why won't he let them go home to their family? It's weird how he just expected them to just leave all of their life behind for him. Because think about it, Wendy and the other boys had really nice caring parents, they had a great protective dog, they had a good childhood going on. In my eyes, Peter seemed as though he was unhealthily obsessed with them, like he wanted to have complete control. And there's a part in the book that is so disturbing, and it takes place right after Wendy tells him that she needs to go home. This is what it says, he was so full of wrath against grown-ups, who as usual were spoiling everything everything. That as soon as he got inside his tree, he breathed intentionally quick short breaths at the rate of about five to a second. He did this because there is a saying in Neverland that every time you breathe, a grown-up dies. And Peter was killing them off vindictively as fast as possible. So literally after Wendy was like, hey Peter, gotta go home, he ran into his tree and started going like, <laughs> 
because he knew that every time he took a breath, a grown-up died. Excuse me? And isn't that weird how they never put that in the movie? Because Disney was, well, I mean, it makes sense. Disney probably didn't want to freak kids out that much. But that's actually what it says in the book, which is so messed up to me. The next point, Peter Pan might be a murderer. So think about it. People can and do die while in Neverland. It's not like you go there and have everlasting life. And Peter's dislike for grown-ups actually extends over to the Lost Boys as well. In the book, it says that when they seem to be growing up, which is against the rules, Peter thins them out, which many people interpret as gets rid of them when they start getting older. If you know what I mean, gets rid of them, like you know, gets rid of them. It's creepy because the book has so much more information that you never learn from the Disney movie or the Robin Williams movie. That movie was called Hook, right? And yeah, those movies already seem kind of dark and twisted, but the book has just so much more information that really puts all of the puzzle pieces together. The next Next point is that Peter Pan has a disturbingly casual attitude about death. There is a part in the book where he has a morbidly odd reaction to almost drowning. So while he's like flailing around in the water, not able to breathe, literally drowning, right after he gets saved, it says, it describes him as having a huge smile on his face as he says, to die would be an awfully big adventure. Why would he say that? Like imagine almost drowning and then basically being like, darn, that would have been cool. Cool. It's like he has no fear, he's not afraid, he just doesn't really care if he lives or dies. And then there are a lot of theories that Peter Pan might actually be death himself. Peter's indifferent attitude towards his own morality might be because he is the Grim Reaper. And in the book, it kind of discusses this further. It says, there were odd stories about him. Like when children died, he went part of the way with them so that they should not be frightened. So that means that Neverland would be like like heaven, right? So is he an angel taking kids there or is he something more sinister? So while I was researching, I found the real backstory behind Peter Pan. So the man who originally wrote the Peter Pan book, his life was pretty messed up and crazy and that's what sort of sparked his idea of making Peter Pan. So the story was originally written by James Matthew Barry, who was born in 1860. What's really unfortunate is that he lost his 13 year old brother in a skating accident, and his mother never fully recovered mentally from the incident. She even started to dress James up as his brother and pretended that his brother was still alive. So some people say that he based Peter Pan off of his brother who passed away, seeing as his brother was pretty much the same age and unfortunately never got to grow up. So that's a really sad backstory about Peter Pan. So it's interesting how Disney took that and made it into a much happier film. Anyways, though, so now that we've sort of talked about the book and the backstory and how Peter Pan is sort of a really dark character, let's talk about the actual Disney movie that you guys all know and love. So we're just gonna go through some points that I think are slightly weird and wrong about the movie. The first one is, did Tinkerbell secretly have some intense strength? And listen, I love Tinkerbell, so don't get me wrong here. There's just some things about her that confuses me. So she's a tiny fairy and she's presented in a way that tells the audience what she lacks in physical strength she makes up for in sass. So please explain to me how she successfully pulled a 12 year old human girl backwards by her hair. Wendy is like a thousand times bigger than her. And I get how adrenaline makes you stronger and whatnot, but when I'm angry, I'm not able to like lift up a train or something. And yeah, I know she's magical and she's a fairy and stuff, but there's other parts in the Peter Pan movie where she struggles to lift something, but somehow she's able to just pull back Wendy completely. It just doesn't like either make her super strong or don't, like you can't put her in the middle. The next one that I think all of us wondered as kids is how did John's hat stay on when he was flying? How was it secure the whole time? I always wondered this when I watched the flying scene. He's literally zooming through intense winds and clouds and he has a top hat on that somehow just stays secure. I mean, of all hats, I feel like top hats are the most flimsy. Did someone sew it on his head like Peter Pan's shadow was sewed onto him? I just don't understand. The next one, why does Peter elect John John, the leader of the Lost Boys, like right away. I feel like there are definitely Lost Boys in that group who have put way more time and effort into things and who are also John's age. How did none of them object to that? They've probably been there with Peter for years and like he's also new to the whole outdoors thing and he literally just arrived and suddenly everybody has to follow his lead. I don't really know if that's fair, just, just me thinking that. The next one, 
um, what is Wendy's hairstyle? I feel like the longer I stare at it, the more I'm confused. It looks like organ pipes. How did she put it together? Is it pieces of a mop? Is it just strange looking curls? I just don't really understand. Next one, why does every single girl in the movie have a thing for Peter? I mean, he seems to be quite the ladies' man. Think about it, you got Wendy, Tinkerbell, Tiger Lily, even some of the mermaids, actually all of the mermaids, I think. They all have this serious crush on Peter Pan. I mean, I kind of see the attraction. He can literally help you fly, which is pretty cool. But if you think about it, he doesn't have the nicest things to say about girls. The first thing we even hear him say about girls is that they talk too much. And then remember when Wendy first introduces her Herself, and she says it by her full name, like her first, her middle, and her last name, and Peter's like, Wendy is fine. Wendy's good enough. Like he completely cuts her off all the time. And then he tells Wendy that he likes her stories because they're always just about him. <laughs> and that's attractive to these girls? Like, I don't know. Come on girls, there's so many lost boys to choose from, you know what I mean? Like you're literally surrounded by a group of them. Why Peter? And my last question that I've always wondered as well is why does Hook and George Darling look like the same person? Since the original play, George Darling and Captain Hook have been traditionally played by the same person. Also, the same actor voiced the two characters in the Disney animated film. And then in the 2003 live action, both characters were played by Jason Isaacs. But why is that? Is it because secretly Hook is the children's father? Like, why do they have the same face? Why are they always played by the same actor? I've never gotten that. I've never just gotten the connection. Does anybody know that? It's just always been such a mystery to me. But anyways, guys, that's all I'm gonna say about Peter Pan. I hope you enjoyed the backstory and talking about the book and talking about the movie. If I missed anything, definitely comment it down below in the comment section. And yeah, I really hope you guys are enjoying this series. I definitely am. It's so fun to research and re-watch these movies. So yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. 